Welcome everyone to the Horner Middle School construction demonstration. We are very happy that you're getting the opportunity to witness the crane demonstration this afternoon and learn more about construction careers. We will also be answering a few of your construction questions. We hope that this will encourage you to consider careers in math, science, and engineering. We want to say thank you to the McCarthy Construction Crew and the CCM and STV companies for creating this educational opportunity here at Horner. I also want to say a special thank you to our district office staff that we have here with us today. We have Ms. Ashmore, she's the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. And we also have Mr. Bailey, he's the Director of Secondary Education, and they're here to support this event today. Yes, thank you to our construction crew and our district office staff. So at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. McGrew. He's the construction manager here on our site, and he's going to get us started this afternoon. Please give him your undivided attention. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. As she said, my name is Nick McGrew. I'm the construction manager for Fremont Unified School District here. What my job is is to basically oversee the day-to-day -day operations out here on site while this, your new campus is being built. Uh, along with me today, I've brought a couple of the uh, construction crew members, uh, starting with Keith Vondra from McCarthy Builders, um, Alex Goetz from McCarthy Builders, Thomas Murphy from McCarthy Builders, and Scott Stokel from McCarthy Builders. Also with us is Nefti Aldana from JD2. They're the steel erection company and he's going to talk a little bit here in just a second about the crane that you see behind me. Uh, with that I'm going to turn it over to Keith from McCarthy. Good afternoon all. We want to thank everybody here and show our appreciation for everybody. We're working on this new campus for you. We all find construction to be a very fun industry to get into. We get to see a change day to day and the things that we do and the things that we get to provide to others are things that we all love to see, we love to see the students we get to provide for. And I uh, wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on the building itself or the three buildings that we have constructed here right now. We have, right now we're building out about 95,000 square feet of floor space that you guys will be able to use for classrooms, there's a gymnasium building, there's a new uh, <laughs> new area for your food service. And today we have what we refer to as building C on the right, building A in the middle, and soon to be coming up over the fence and masonry will be building B, which is the gymnasium building. So a little bit of details, we have a little more than 60 classrooms that we will be constructing, many lab spaces, many different ways that you guys will be able to learn new things, new, new building, new, new systems. We have uh, quite a lot of new things, I guess. And uh, I think maybe it would be good to explain to you a little bit about how our team is set up and how everybody here, so how many of our team members are engineers? All right, so between Engineering, math, architecture, there's a lot of different things that get involved in a project like this. And I'd like to have one of our engineers here give you a little bit of information about how he's been involved with steel on our project and in past project. I'd like to introduce Scott, if you'd like to say a few words. Hey everyone, thanks for having us today. Um, I've been, in my career so far with McCarthy, I've been involved with a lot of steel structures uh, like the one you see here. And um, it is very true that math is integral to erecting steel structures and, and designing and building structures. Uh, for our part in the construction side, a lot of times you're not able to directly measure something. So these huge beams, um, we don't have a scale on site to determine how much they weigh. If we have pieces of equipment, a lot of times we don't have direct measurements of how much they weigh. We have to use the knowledge of the density of the material and the lengths, the dimensions of it to determine how much it weighs and that really determines what size crane needs to be used and, and whether it's the crane that we have is capable of erecting them and the reach that it has. So that's just one example of using things that you know we learned in elementary school, middle school, high school and beyond 
in our everyday today experience uh, building a construction project. Um, I think that's all I have to say at the moment, but uh, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Nefty here, our uh, steel superintendent, to uh, go into a little more details. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you. Who knew? Uh, so uh, I was given a question by Sri Laxmi uh, about this particular crane. The question was, how did this crane get onto this job site? So different cranes are transported in different ways. This is actually a pretty small crane, and this crane drives itself. Uh, but you're not going to see one of these cranes on the road, usually. They, they drive them at night. They have to get a special permit. So that's how this particular crane came out here, okay? So um, McCarthy asked me to, and Nick asked me to talk to you guys a little bit about, you know, cranes and their capacity and how they work. Um, but before I get into that, uh, we're, we're just going to set a piece of iron so you guys can kind of see the whole process beginning to end, okay? Is that okay? That's a pretty typical process for erecting a steel building. That particular beam weighed about 1,500 pounds, so just under a ton. 
and uh, you can kind of see how far the crane has to move, boom down to reach it. And uh, I'm sure that some of you have seen this crane in the afternoon. All those sections of, of boom that you see that are extended, they all tuck in and it, it gets kind of small uh, in the afternoon. It all gets put away. Um, it's, uh, it's dangerous work. Um, like Scott was talking about, you still have to, you still have to, you still have to have an education even to be able to do something like construction. So I don't know if any of you want to end up there erecting steel like that. Regardless, you should stay in school. So that's about all I got. Thanks, Daphne. Okay, so we'll let you guys ask a couple of questions if you guys want to, but one of the questions that we got from Miss Liz was, what are all the streamers hanging from the ceiling in the building over here? And does anybody, any idea? It's the hanging all the duct work that will go in. So all that mechanical equipment that you'll see put on the roof here before too long is what creates all the air movement that conditions the airspace that you guys use, the air conditioning, the heating. Most of those straps are going to be used to hold the duct system that supplies and returns the air through the airspace. And that also will be conduit, other fire alarm, and different, different systems that you see in the day-to-day -day in your classroom but don't know what's going on above the ceiling or inside the walls. So, anybody else have any other questions? What's that? What's your guys' salary? Yeah, baby. I'll save that question for another time. <laughs> anybody else? Yeah. How do you get the job? Well, for most of us, we went to school. We all graduated from a program comparable to the industry that we are in. I went to a, a program called Construction Management. Many of our team members go to school for civil engineering. And from there, we usually work out an internship with a company like we're working for. And from that, we get into the industry and the, and the general contractor side. The same thing would work in many of the different industries we work under as well. How tall is what? Nifty, how tall is the tallest crane? So that's an interesting question. How tall is the tallest crane? Um, they really don't have a, a height limitation. If you're talking about a crane that sits on the ground, a conventional crane, I've seen them as high as uh, maybe 300 feet of, of boom, of tower. Uh, but most cranes nowadays are going to be attached to the building. They're going to go up with the building. Um, I just came off a building in New York City that is about 1,300 feet tall. And there were cranes on that building all the way to the top. So the cranes attached to the building and they stay on the building all the way to the top. And then they get disassembled and dropped down. So they can go as high as you need them to, as you need them to go. Put anything up? All right. Back to Ms. Jana. Okay, everybody. So thank you so much for being a part of this demonstration. I just want to point out that we do have the architect with us today. He just joined us. And he is Mr. Bradley from CVSVA. So, Mr. Bradley, can you raise your hand? This is the person who designed the new school. He's here with us. Can we give him a round of applause and everybody who helped out today? So we are going to go ahead and dismiss you in an orderly fashion. Thank you very much and we hope that you are inspired by this.